What will score you more goals, power, curve or knuckle? Well that question and much more will be answered in this video as I find out what's the most effective way to score a goal. Right, so the first strategy I want to test out is to do with free kicks. Should you go over the wall or around the wall? Let's find out. Right, so I'm going to have a load of shots, some going around the wall, some going over the wall, and we're going to work out a percentage of which one I score more with. If I'm going to put my money on it, I would say over the wall's better, but let's find out. We've got Luke in goal trying to stop every shot that comes his way. The first test, over versus around the wall. Let's go. And straight away on the second shot, we have a surprising result. Oh, ho, ho! That's one hill to round the wall. Oh, what a save, keeper! Wow. So I carried on taking a load more shots, mixing between over the wall and going round the wall. But after the first 12 shots, the only goal had come from going round the wall. Even though I've not scored more going over the wall yet, it does feel like there are a lot better free kicks. It's obviously definitely harder to hit the ball over the wall. There's a bit more skill involved there. So I've finished off strong there with a few nice goals going over the wall. Now let's take a look at the final results. So taking free kicks round the wall, I had a success rate of 5%, whereas going over the wall, I had a success rate of 18%. So it's clear to see the best strategy for taking a free kick is to aim over the wall. Right, next up, we're gonna test the best strategy to score a penalty, power versus placement. I'm gonna have some penalties where I smash them and some where I place them into the corners and we're gonna see which one scores more goals. So to test this, I just took a load of penalties. Some of them I hit really hard and others just placing them into the corners. Oh, I read that like a book. When you hit a power penalty right, there's not much save in it though. That's the only difference. Oh man. Oh no. Power. I don't think it's the one. Oh, right. That's the penalty is done. Let's look at the results. So after taking a load of penalties, the shots that were hit with power, I scored 48% of the time. And the shots where I placed the ball, I scored 60% of the time. So placement just wins, but neither of them are great. So I've got another test for penalties later on in the video to see if there's a better technique than this. Right, so now we've got a little test that's gonna test accuracy. Is it better to use your side foot or chip the ball? Let's find out. So I've put a target in the top corner and I'm gonna have back-to-back -back shots, chipping the ball and curving the ball. And whichever technique goes in the basket first, I will declare the best strategy for accuracy. Right, I'll start off with a curved side foot. Extra, extra, read all about it. I've got to say, I do feel more accurate when I'm chipping it at the minute. Only fear God with the fear God I'm in. Been blessed, prayed up, amen. Now I'm getting to this money like a paper route kid. There it is. Chip has won. And if I'm honest, that's kind of what I expected. I felt a lot more accurate chipping. Now, later on in the video, I'll be seeing what's the most effective shooting technique, knuckle versus curve versus power. But next up, what's the best method of controlling a football? So there's three main methods of controlling a football. Number one, the toe of your boot slash the laces. Number two, the instep of your foot. And number three, the thigh. I'm not gonna include the chest because I think that's a different kind of control entirely. I'm gonna ping this ball as high as I can and then see which method's the best for controlling it. Okay, let's go. First off, I'm gonna start with the instep of the boot. So the instep was really good and I controlled the ball 90% of the time. Next up, let's try the thigh. Why should I stay here, where can I go? You know what, I thought the thigh was going to be the easiest, but it's actually quite difficult. So using the thigh, I controlled the ball 70% of the time. Right, so the thigh wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But next up, laces slash toe of the boot, let's go. The toe's got to be the most satisfying one as well. 
So using the toe, I also controlled the ball 90% of the time. And here are the final results. So it seems the best strategy for controlling a football is to use your foot. Next up, I want to see what's the best strategy for scoring a 1v1 with the keeper. Should you take the ball round the goalie or should you shoot early? Let's find out. Right, 1v1s, there's two different strategies I'm going to test on this. Should you shoot early or take the ball round the keeper? Let's find out. All right, you ready, Luke? Let's go. So the thought behind this is, if you shoot early, you can take the keeper off guard. But if you go round the goalie, you can make sure you're shooting into an empty net. There we go. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I would say so far, I am liking going around a bit more. So I repeated a load of 1v1s, mixing between shooting early and taking the ball around the keeper. Oh, no. oh. oh save. And the results are in. When shooting early, I scored 70% of the time, but when taking the ball around the keeper, I scored 90%. So I would say the best strategy for a 1v1 with the keeper is to take the ball around them. Right, now we're testing some more penalties. Is it better to shoot in the top corners or the bottom corners? Obviously, if the ball goes in the top corner, the keeper's not saving it, but it is also a lot harder to do. So let's find out which one's gonna score you more goals. So once again, I took a load of penalties, some aiming for the top corner and some aiming for the bottom corner, and I'll work out a percentage of how many I scored. Ah, oh, I honestly think this could be pretty even, you know. Ah, oh, see, there you go. Even though he went the right way, because it was in the top corner, he didn't save it. My top corner is the one. Oh, oh, that's why top corner is so dangerous. Right, those are the penalties done. Let's find out the results. Now the results are in and top corner, I've scored 80% of the shots and bottom corner, I've scored 85% of the shots. Now I do think that against a pro keeper, bottom corners would have had less success. But I think what let top corner down was just the fact it's a riskier shot to play because obviously you're more likely to miss the target. So for penalties, bottom corners are the way to go. All right, let's go. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a test for goalkeepers. What's the best strategy of saving a 1v1? Should I bomb out to the ball and commit early or should I stand my ground? Let's find out. Come on, keeper. That's one point for standing up. So here's a test for you goalkeepers out there. What's the best way of defending a 1v1? This one, I'm just gonna to commit to it and just go straight for the ball. Committing early to the ball or standing your ground and being patient. Oh. I asked Luke what was easier for him and he said that when I bombed out, it made it a lot easier for him as he can just skip past me. If I wait a bit, I'm forcing him to make a decision. Whereas if I bomb out to the ball, his decision's already made, he's taking it around me. So the results are in. When I bombed out and committed to the ball, I saved 15% of the time. But when I stood my ground, I saved 25% of the time. So it's clear that 1v1s are not in the goalie's favor, but maybe forcing the attacker to make a decision is the way to go. Also, the longer you delay, the more time it gives your defenders to get back and support. Now, what's the most effective way of getting past a defender? Should you use pace or skills? So on the attempts where I used skills, it was very inconsistent. I messed up quite a bit. I slowed down too much and allowed the defender to compose himself. All round, it wasn't great. But when running at pace, it made it a lot easier to get past him. There's definitely a time and a place for using skills, but overall, running at a defender at speed and focusing on body feints is the best strategy. Right, now the final test I want to try out is the big one. What is the best shooting method to score goals? Is it power? Is it knuckle or is it curve? I'm gonna have a load of shots at each, then we'll work out which percentage scores the most. Let's go. First up, power. Straight keeper. Extra, extra, read all about it. Oh yes, mate, power's the one. <laughs> Obviously this is the first technique. I don't know how the others have done, but I'm liking power at the minute. Now the power shots were good and I was scoring quite a few, but they weren't the most accurate, so I did sky a couple. All right, that's the power shots done. I feel like I scored quite a lot of goals then. Next up, we got curve. I've got high hopes for this because there's a lot more accuracy. Let's go. Oh, straight away. 
Yes, I am liking this curve technique. It's working wonders. So curve got off to a good start. At the end, I'll show you the percentage of goals scored with each technique so we can find out a winner. Oh, what a save from Keeps. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Work hard for the curve. Could be the optimal technique, but we've not seen Knuckle yet. Now the curve technique felt great. Every shot felt like it had a chance of going in and overall was just really accurate. Although the lack of power did make some shots easy for the keeper to save. That's curve done. That was really good. I felt a lot more confident behind the curve than I did with the power. Now the wild card. Could the knuckleball be the best shooting technique? Let's find out. And the final technique to test out is the knuckleball. Let's see how it does. Now, the amount of shots that missed the target using this technique was crazy, but occasionally it did produce a moment of magic. Okay, final shot with the knuckleballs. They've not done great so far. A few nice goals, but let's see if we can top it off nicely. Oh! That was good. Let's take a look at the results. So let's take a look at which shooting technique is the best for scoring goals. So coming in at third place with 18% of shots scored is the knuckleball. Second place with 37% of shots converted is the power shot. And first place with 60% of shots scored was the curve technique. So if you want to score more goals, it seems precision beats power.